There are three types of bar chords that you're going to need to know how to play based off of the sixth string, and that's what I'm going to teach you in this lesson. The first chord we're going to take a look at is a major bar chord based off of the sixth string. Uh, for me, the easiest way to think of where does this come from is if you already know how to play an E major chord. You can look at the chart down below if you don't know how to play it. Uh, so the easiest way for me to think about this or tell a student, it's just this chord moved up the neck. So what happens, you can't just take this chord and just move it up here. If this is an E chord, you can't just move it up a uh, half step and then it's an F chord. What has to happen, although it's a cool sounding chord. What has to happen here is your first finger needs the bar crossed here and act basically as the nut. Because when I'm playing this chord, uh, you know, you have a bunch of open strings. You have a couple open strings. Strings one, two, and six are ringing open. Uh, so that's, um, you know, the nut here is taking care of that. So when you move up, your first finger now has to become kind of like the nut and bar the whole way across all six strings. So if this is an E, if I move this up a half step, this would be an F major, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, so on and so forth. Now let's take a little closer look at exactly how to finger this. All right, to finger this major bar chord, the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to create this chord uh, off the fifth fret here. This is A right here, so this is going to be an A major chord. I can really do it anywhere. I can do it up here. You know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just choosing the middle of the neck. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bar my first finger the whole way across all six strings. One of the things that I talk about in uh, how to practice this chord is you have to be able to hold that finger down, strum all six strings, and be able to hear them. This is going to take a lot of practice, uh, but eventually um, you, you will get it. Um, so that's the first thing you do. You bar th this uh, finger the whole way across all six strings. Then we're going to take our third finger and put it on the 5th string 7th fret right here on E. Then we're going to take our pinky and put it back behind uh, my 3rd finger here on the 4th string 7th fret. And then I'm going to take my, um, my, my middle finger here, my 2nd finger, I'm going to put it on the 3rd string 6th fret right here on the C sharp. Uh, and then the, um, my 1st finger is going to take care of the, this A here. Uh, it's going to take care of the notes that you're not um, playing with your other fingers, which happens to be on the first, second, and sixth string. I know, so I generally tell people, press down as hard as you need to. Um, generally, I tell people, press down maybe too hard, and then kind of lighten, lighten up to the point where when you start to hear it kind of get muted out, then you're pressing, you're, you know, you're not pressing down hard enough. So I think it's important to kind of... Um, you have to figure out the exact right pressure you need because these are these are these chords are tiring. They get very tiring. Uh, they really um, uh, tire out your hand pretty quickly. So you need to learn the right amount of pressure. Uh, and actually, if you press too hard, it'll actually make some of the notes sharp. Uh, so yeah, you need to figure out just the right amount uh, so that you don't tire your hands out and you're not pressing so hard that they're that the notes are going sharp. All right, so now let's go through, and I'm going to basically uh, tell you how how this is a bar chord and kind of analyze this chord, and let's actually learn how this is created. All right, so when we have a major chord, um, the chord tones for a major chord are 1, 3, and 5. So here's how a major scale goes. You can look at the chart down below. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, and then two's up here. So when you play a major chord, it all has to be roots, thirds, and fifths. So what, when you play this chord, what you're actually playing is, uh, in this specific instance, um, A is 1, C sharp is 3, and E is 5. So what we're actually playing is we're playing 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1. Uh, because in a major chord, it has to be all 1s, 3s, and 5s. So that's why this is a major chord here. If I went through and I told you what notes I'm playing, I'm playing A, then E, then A, C sharp, E, and then back to 1. And that's why this is an A major chord.
Something else I want to mention about this chord is your thumb placement. Uh, when you play open chords, your thumb's kind of, uh, it could be up here. You're kind of having your palm more in against the, the neck, and it's, it feels, has a, yeah, it's a real grippy. You know, I can just kind of grab the, the, the guitar here and play my open chords. When it comes to bar chords, uh, I'll see students having the thumb up here. Unless you have gigantic hands, um, you basically, you, your thumb needs to be down in the back of the neck because you need to be able to press pretty hard to play that, that uh, chord. Um, so you need to be able to squeeze really hard, so you're going to end up having to drop your wrist down so that you can comfortably reach across. You can't hold it like this, um, unless you have, like I said, really big hands, but even then, you really need to drop your wrist down so that these fingers can reach in properly. Um, you're just not going to be able to pull it off. It's going to feel very strange if you're going to try to play it like this um, with your thumb. So uh, you're going to need to drop the wrist down, and press, uh, basically your thumb is going to have to be right behind uh, where your first finger is barring across. So what I would do is I would grab this chord and then just have fun with it. Just start strumming it and practice moving it around. Um, that way you can practice strumming, you can practice uh, uh, using the chord. Uh, generally when I move from one to the next, what you what you don't want to do is take your hand off and completely rebuild the chord. You just don't have time for that. So um, you just lift up and slide down. So I just uh, play in the chord. I slide down. I kind of target my eyes, target where I want to go next, and then I just slide down. And don't even really worry about whether it sounds good. Play wrong notes. Just move your hand around a lot. So just because uh, your hand's going to need to get used to what does it feel like to play that up here versus down here on the second fret. It's going to feel a lot different because of the width of the frets. Uh, so just play a lot, play often, and play them all over the neck. All right, the next chord we're going to take a look at is a minor chord. The major chord was like this. To turn it into a minor chord, all we do is we just take off our middle finger. And where this chord comes from, if you know how to play an E minor chord, if we just slide that up, you know, we're kind of using the, the nut here to take care of strings uh, 1, 2, 3, and 6. Uh, but if we slide that up, we have to bar across here. This would be an F minor, G minor, A minor, B minor. All right, now let's take a look at how to build that chord. Okay, to build it, we're going to start with barring our uh, first finger across uh, the whole way across the fifth fret. I'm doing an A minor again. Uh, we're going to do them all in A minor. Uh, so we're going to, once again, bar the whole way across. Then we're going to take our third finger and put it on the fifth string seventh fret on this E right here. Then I'm going to take my pinky and put it on the fourth string seventh fret on this A. And then that's it. Um, it just I just bar this the whole way across. Then I put those two fingers down. And then strings one, two, three, and six are open. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at how this chord is created, music theory-wise. All right, so if we took, uh, say, an A minor scale, goes one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one maybe two flat three up here. Uh, so what, what, what we're going to do here is analyze, um, you know, what are the notes and how do they function here. Uh, to spell an, uh, an A minor triad, it's A, C, E, or one flat three and five. To create a minor chord, we're going to have all ones, flat threes, and fives. And the easiest way that uh, people have figured out how to play that is just what we're doing here. We have a root, a fifth, a root, a flat third, a fifth, and then the root again. So that's music theory wise, that's how that is created. Any minor chord you play is going to be uh, ones, flat threes, and fives. And like I mentioned with the last chord, you want to move it around. Just get a little groove going. And then just eye another chord.
sometimes you'll notice me, I'll put my finger down. Uh, if I'm not thinking, sometimes I use this finger to lay over top of my first finger to help push down. I don't typically do that, but I think uh, instead of having my finger kind of flailing around, I just think sometimes it, I kind of just keep it up against my first finger. And that's how you play an A minor bar chord. Now we're going to take a look at how to play the third form. We went over major, minor, now we're going to go over dominant seventh. So if you remember how to play the major, where we, um, we were playing it like this and had the root, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. What we're going to do to change this to a dominant seventh chord, all we're going to do is take our pinky off. We take that off, and what that does is it takes this root here and it turns it uh, into a flat seven or a minor seven. So if you know how to play an E7 chord, like right here, you play it like this, you know, kind of pretend here we're barring across, but I just move it up. Now all of a sudden this is F7 with E7, F7, G7, and then A7. So let's take a look at exactly how we're fingering that. All right, I'm gonna do it up here on the fifth fret once again, and we're gonna bar the whole way across the six, all six strings on the fifth fret. Then I'm going to take my third finger and put it on this E right here, which is on the fifth string, seventh fret. And then on the fourth string, I'm not going to play anything. I'm going to let my uh, my first finger here get this G right here. So it goes, um, I'm playing frets five, seven, and then five again. And then on the, I'm going to put my second finger on the third string, sixth fret on this C sharp. That's the third right there. So that's how you play it. You just... Um, so it, to me, the easiest way I tell students is just think of a major chord and take your pinky off. All right, now let's go through and analyze uh, what those numbers are. All right, in a dominant seventh chord, you typically have a root, a fifth, a flat seventh, and a third. So um, we're going. I'm going to show you how to play an A mixolydian scale. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Flat seven, one, two, three. So don't get too caught up in, well, what is a mixolydian? You know, I, I don't know what that means. Uh, that's basically the fifth mode uh, in the key of D major, and that probably sounds really confusing. But I'm just, I'm using that scale because this chord, it, this is a chord that can come out of a, a mixolydian scale. Uh, so I thought it, it would be appropriate to show you uh, how the numbers work. Uh, so, so if we go through and analyze, I had mentioned that in a dominant seventh chord, we generally need a, need a root, third, fifth, and flat seventh. So if we go through and analyze this, we have a root, this A, the, the fifth here is E, this G here is your flat seventh, or your minor seventh. And then we have a root here with A, C sharp is the third, E is the fifth, then we go back to A here on top, which is the root. So it goes one, five, flat seven, three, five, one. That's kind of technically how it's working. And this chord, you just want to move around like I did with the other chords, just... If you're thinking, well, this chord sounds kind of strange. It doesn't sound right. Uh, it's because this chord is specifically designed when you hear it, uh, your ear wants to hear uh, some kind of resolution. It's Because this chord, it's not major, and it's not minor. It's a little of both. It has the major third, but then it has a minor seventh. So what it does, it creates a little bit of tension that your ear wants to hear be resolved. So this A7, your ear kind of wants to hear it resolved to a D. So if you're wondering what is this kind of strange chord, um, there are three main types of chords you really need to get down on guitar really well, and that's major, minor, and dominant seventh chords. And this is one of the three that you need to get down. And that's how you're going to play your three main bar chords based off of the sixth string.